Welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Dr. Pacho. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. Every time I hear that intro, I'm reminded of our beginnings. And, um, you know, we had to change up our music, and I'm still trying, Benny. Uh, apparently, I cannot get my hands on the original email that I sent to get permission to play Coldplay. It's clocks in our intro. And the music industry has changed so much since we started doing this, that it's become really one of, if you don't have an official agreement, you cannot play their music. And back in the day, Benny and I used to just play music. But now I think we can play music, but we can't archive it. And so what's the point of this little rant I'm doing? Well, the point is that things change, times change. And that music intro was written by and performed by Nick Johnson, who was an intern here back in the day. And I'm really struck by this because my guest today has taken this journey along with us to understand where we were, where we are today, and where we want to go. And to say that the landscape of talk radio has changed would probably be an understatement. Just saying the words talk radio and social media in the same sentence causes you to really think about what that even means. Today, Jessica Henderson is joining me here today. She's the host of her own podcast, uh, and you'll hear about that. But she is our senior executive producer. She's also our general operations manager, responsible for sales, responsible for production, responsible for so many of the things that you see on the Transformation Network and Transformation Talk Radio. And yet you very rarely hear from her on a show. Now, I will say she has stepped out and is doing her own podcast, which is incredible, and you'll hear about today. But she started with us and me in a little room in my apartment a number of years ago, sitting next to another woman that was getting instructions from Oliver in Germany as we started to build Transformation Talk Radio. Today, we want to talk with you about where we are, where we're going, and why we're going there. This is about freedom of choice. And what do we mean by that? I never thought in a million years that I, somebody who has participated in more marches for freedom than I can imagine, more protests during the AIDS epidemic, more areas of pounding the pavement for women's rights, for rights for people of all colors and all races. Um, and yet today, we're back pounding the pavement on what I consider to be one of the most insidious violations of our rights, and that's our rights to speak. Today, join us in a conversation about what we mean by freedom of choice, because it doesn't just come from the spoken word, but it comes now in so many aspects of what we're seeing in our culture in the United States. And by far, this country has more freedom than a lot of other countries, but yet we still remain quite at odds with each other around so many things. Jessica, it's great to have you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Tell everybody the name of your podcast. 
It's called the possibility perspective. And the point of it is to look at things like what we're going to talk about today and looking at where we all come from uh, in our different perspectives, how those are shaped and why we stand in them and hopefully opening up conversations a little bit more to understand each other better. And so this topic today is about freedom and it's about the freedom of choice. Let's start with a conversation from your perspective on where you, where do you land when you think about the word freedom? Tell me where you land. What does that mean to you? So I've been all over the place with it, which is why I chose this as the topic because I've been on rants about my personal freedoms, my freedom to be and do and choose what I want to choose in my life, whether it's on a spiritual perspective or a political perspective, it doesn't really matter. And what I came to is we all define freedom differently, (laughs) even though there's a, there's a definition of freedom in the dictionary we all define it differently. And so for me, the thing I relate to the most is the freedom to be the freedom to be who we were meant to be. And if I bottom line it there, then everything else kind of, you know, ripples into that. But I think a basic freedom is to be who you were meant to be. Mm -hmm. Um, One of my favorite quotes about freedom is from a woman who would be 76 years old if she were still with us, who I literally followed around from concert to concert to concert, finally met her, shared shared a bottle of something together as she dropped out on the side stage. And it was one of my favorite quotes and one of the least, and one of the quotes that I knew least about at the age I was, and it's Janis Joplin. And when she, when she sang out that, and Benny, you're going to have to get the song, okay? When she sang out, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. And then she goes on to say, nothing don't mean nothing honey, if it ain't free. Now, if that is not a double or triple entendre or whatever that means, but that was the quote of our time, you see? What year was that? Well, certainly she disappeared from the planet in 1970. So you can imagine what that word meant. Why is freedom coming up now? What's being challenged, Jessica? Um, our freedom of speech. And the thing that I'm realizing and the reason this is called freedom to choose is because some, in my opinion, we have a little bit of a skewed idea of what freedom means because freedom doesn't necessarily mean you can go and do and say whatever you want without consequence. There's always been consequence from the beginning of time. So to think that you can just freely say and be and do whatever you want without consequence sometimes is an illusion. And however, we have to really sit back and look at where do we need to draw some lines Mm -hmm. and where do we need to be able to move those lines? Mm -hmm. Because from the beginning of time, I mean, well, I think about it this way we have to learn to think about where we are and because we always have the freedom to choose whether we're going to react or believe or engage with what somebody else says, but we don't have the freedom to decide what they say or don't say. Mm -hmm. Where do you think freedom is being hit most right now? Give us a couple examples and then tell us really from your perspective, I know that you're gonna share with us what the three types of freedoms are but I'm even finding it a little bit absurd that one of our social media platforms or one of our, our, our browser platforms, I don't even know what to call them anymore, is now restricting spiritual ads from playing. I mean, right. It's, I mean, if we're going to talk about the problem, then it's, it's pretty much mainstream media. Mainstream media right now is 
cracking down so tightly on what people can talk about. They've removed the ability for us to have debate. They've yeah. removed the ability for us to have debate and question things because now you're there's, you know, either it's just squashed and it's not even brought out, or there's a picture painted of anyone who questions anything that they're the enemy. And mm. now if you go back and look at the ripple effect of this is some of that our own doing, because we also lost the ability to respectfully debate with each other about things. And, you know, we could point fingers all we want on where that started and how that came about. And, but still we really need to look at this because that's the problem right now is mainstream media, social media, uh, TV, radio, anything, anything out there basically today, <laughs> unless you're an independent, completely independently owned. And even then you risk, you, you, you risk not being found on yeah. Google searches and things like that. If you are trying to be independent. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I've been asked a lot. Why haven't I converted uh, the transformation network and transformation talk radio into a nonprofit? And, uh, or am I going to convert an arm of the, as we move forward and expand into a nonprofit? And I had to respectfully explain that the minute I do that, it, it, it I enter into a, a set of new controls, just like NPR. You know, everybody thinks NPR is an independent venue, but in, in NPR, so long as you are getting grants from the government, I mean, there is a level of control and monitoring that happens in that arena. And, you, you know, I learned a long time ago from one of our sponsors and advertisers about why she didn't take an organization that would have been highly successful as a nonprofit. And she explained she would lose control. And so that's why we're, we're standing out here and building what we built. But even this show today, it's being broadcast on other networks and respectfully so. I'm very mindful not to do anything to hinder or, uh, or negatively impact one of our flagship stations, KKNW, AM 1150 and all their HD affiliates. I'm very mindful of that. Um, the other, because they're streaming to YouTube, we're streaming to Facebook. And so in this venue now, you and I find ourselves being very careful about what we talk about and how we talk about it. Um, what does freedom not mean? Let's talk about what freedom doesn't mean when we come back from break. What doesn't it mean? I have the freedom to bear arms but I don't have the freedom to pull that arms out and shoot it at a bunch of people. When we come back, are we making conscious or unconscious choices? And what is one of the greatest paradoxes that we face now about choice? Can we have our cake and eat it too? When we come back, Jessica Henderson is in the house. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. Yeah, I'm telling you, you had to be there, I think. But I think Jessica Henderson is representing uh, a generation of people that are there right now. And, you know, I've often asked myself, um, how is this different, but how is it similar from when I was growing up? What has changed? Has anything changed? And, you know, Jessica Henderson is my very special guest today. She is, the, you know, a pivotal, pivotal leader on the Transformation Network team. She wears a lot of hats and a lot of what you're seeing now play on social media came from her genius. She also is the host of her own show. Um, and this is a conversation that she and I have had and you know we're struggling with as a network in how to come out in 2022 and and believe me we have the technology to come out as independent 
but what have we discovered along the way in making those choices? Jessica, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, certainly what I've seen, and this is just a glimpse, I've seen how cable, it used to be called cable, how cable transformed the landscape of television. Now, what do I mean by that? Television, you cannot say anything. Cable pops out and they tested the waters all the way to the point now where if you are live streaming on any of those, whether it's HBO Max, Disney, probably Disney wouldn't be in this category, but any of those networks now live streaming, very few restrictions on not only what they can say, but what they can show. And yet, people, people can't do it. Unless we're part of the top two mega companies that own everything. It's very difficult to be who you want to be. And so we've become silenced. So let's talk from your perspective on how you make decisions. You know, do you consider conscious versus unconscious choices? Tell me what you decide. Tell me what has sparked a fire in you to pick this topic. We all make conscious and unconscious decisions all the time. And I, what I actually had just came to this as you were talking that part of our problem right now is fear, fear of what somebody else is going to do or say, and what kind of reaction that's going to create or what kind of belief system that's going to create, right? We're, we're all of this is driven by fear at its core. So what if instead of silencing people for saying whatever they want to say, whether you believe it or not, what if we started to look at our, our own selves as conscious and unconscious decision makers? Because if we can learn to train the unconscious, then we don't have to be in fear of noise that's out there that is true or untrue or fearful or negative or any of it because we're in control of ourselves. See, the fear comes from people being led and being duped and being, you know, a false reality being created for people, right? Conspiracies, this, whatever. We have all these stories and it's all rooted in fear. And so if we take a step back from that and look at what consciously are we tuning into and then what are the subconscious or what Dr. Dr. Patrick Porter says or the um, other than conscious mind, what is the other than conscious mind taking in all the mm -hmm. time? And we have the ability to train that unconscious mind. And it takes effort and it takes work and it takes conscious decisions on what we are tuning into, what emotional reactions are we having to that, that we are tuning into? Because if you're sitting in front of the news and you're, um, my dad will never listen to this, but I'll just use him as an example. If you're <laughs> sitting in front of the news and you're screaming at the TV in the basement about all these people and these idiots and what they're saying and blah, 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 blah. You're clearly having an emotional reaction to that right? But are you conscious in that moment of why you're reacting to it? What is it that they said that triggered you? So I think if we could all turn inward a little bit and start to look at conscious versus unconscious versus emotional intelligence and start to work on ourselves in that way, all of the fear about what's going on in the world around you goes away because you come home to yourself. Yeah. And that's what freedom is. That's how you can be truly free. Yeah. I want to be really clear about something too. Uh, and I love Dr. Patrick Porter. I love the brain tap. I know what it does, but I will tell you my experience with the brain tap is that it not only helps me get in touch with that, that part of myself, which provides clarity and allows me to see something 
that's less hindered by fear and past. But here's what it does for me. It also helps me take action. And this really is at the cornerstone of what we're talking about today, because you and I could sit here and, and you're going to, when we come back from break, you're going to talk about what you, you, something you and I discovered ages ago with the illusion of choice. But here's the thing that I'm discovering, and yet I'm stuck in my own discovery, right? Uh, because I'm, I'm not quite where Janis Joplin is about freedom means you know, like that I have nothing left to lose. I'm not there. There's so much freedom in that statement. There's so much, if you break that little sentence down, that little crazy Janis Joplin, freedom is just another word with nothing left to lose. I will tell you that that has come to mean so many things to so many people of my generation. And then we forgot. We forgot. We forgot. We went and we got a corporate job or we went on our way. And then the universe brought me back in 2003 to remember. But action is the end game. And you and I know there'll be many people that we interview, that I've interviewed, that will talk about consciousness or the subconscious as if it were static. But you know, and I know, an hour on the brain tap, we feel like we're going to do something. I want to ask you this before we go to break. You and I had an experience, and I talked about it the other day. Um, in 2019. And we kind of got in right before, I call it the COVID. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I think I could say it. Um, but we, we had that experience right before. See how smart the universe is? And you and I got on a plane. And almost at the same time, looked at each other. The plane was a nighttime plane. And we looked at each other and we just said, I'm different. That awakening at the conscious and subconscious level, though, caused us to take an action, didn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the thing. If we are learning to be more aware of those moments, those are the seeds that are planted that then completely change your reality. They change the way you take inspired action. They change the way you go about something. And it really changed not changed. I would changed isn't the right word. I would say completely laser focused the direction we wanted to go in as a network. So when we come back, what is the illusion that we have of choice? If we follow along what you just said for a minute, What is the illusion we have all slipped into? What does it mean? What does it mean to you? And what does it mean for the show today? Jessica Henderson. Jessica, how do they find out about you? You can go to thepossibilityperspective.com. And also you can just Google the possibility perspective because since my show is on the Transformation Network, I have a great Google ranking. <laughs> <laughs> That was a great plug. Let's take a short break, everybody. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah. I think I met Bobby McGee. That's cool. Although Janice Joplin would never tell. You know what it's like? It's just like the song, You're So Vain. Are they ever going to, is she ever, between her and Alanis Morissette, you wonder who were they writing about? Alanis Morissette. You got to know somebody was there. Many people think it was Ryan Reynolds, but I don't know. That's another show. We'll have to do a show <laughs> on music. The mystery behind the song. Uh, we have a great show. It's so exciting to have Jessica join me here today. 
uh, again, give out your website. And then we got a caller that's got a question about confidence. We're going to go right to the phones. What do you think? Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. You can find me at the possibility perspective.com. You can find me at transformation talk radio.com. Benny, who do we have? Yeah. Eric from Florida. Eric, welcome to the show. Hey, Eric. Welcome to the uh, show. Hello. Hi. Is it, is it me? Yes, it's you. Uh, it's you. Oh, hi. Oh, thank you. Thanks for taking, thank you so much for taking my call. And, um, I really do appreciate it. You guys are, um, I really appreciate what you're, what everything that you do. My name is Eric. They call me scare, scare, uh, scare. <laughs> is what my nickname was gr uh, growing up because I was always scared. Oh, wow. Yeah. I get that. How can um, we help you? So, today? Well, I don't know why you're yelling at me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I feel like now I've. I've oh, no, no. We're not yelling. Right we're now. not yelling at you. We'd love to know how we can help you. Do you guys hate me? Oh, gosh. No, I don't. I don't even know where that's coming from. Benny? Yep. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, we're not sending any bad vibes whatsoever to you, bud. Apologize. I'm sorry. It's not you guys. It's me. I'm, I'm sort of scared being on the call, to be honest with you. It's my first time doing a call in some time. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think we lost him. Okay. I, I think we lost Eric. Uh, it, it, you know, it is scary calling in sometimes. Have you ever called into a show, Jessica? Uh, no, but I know the first time you asked me to come on and do a show with you, I was terrified. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. I, you know, I still get really nervous doing this, especially when we're talking about things like what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, you know, part of this is how much fear drives our lives. Mm hmm and you know let's talk about the illusion of choice because the illusion of choice is fueled by and fed by fear but yet we still think we have the freedom to choose tell us about your perspective on that yeah so i'm i'm relating it to my aha moment watching the latest matrix movie and Full disclosure, I think I only watched the very first one. I don't think I watched the second two. So any F Matrix fans out there, feel free to tell me how terribly I'm getting this. But I believe the point of the movie is the whole idea of the illusion of your choice and the illusion of your own reality. And I believe that we aren't grounded in reality when, we, when there is an illusion of choice and specifically related to the media. And we we came across this quite a while ago and it's an old study now and i looked before this to see if i could find any new data or information and i wasn't able to find it so the study and these numbers come from 2011 yeah um but it says that in 1983 90% of american media was owned by 50 and in 2011 the same 90% was owned by six different companies yeah and so when we start to put that together Say, say the data is the same today. We're not really getting a choice then in the type of media we're consuming because everything is controlled by the same six entities. So when you think you're choosing this program versus this outlet versus this, and if you really start to step back and look at it, you're missing half the reality always, mm -hmm. always. And that's part of the problem because then everything is fear-based. Unless you're some kind of independent media, almost all of this that I've been, looked into is all fear-based. Even marketing is fear-based. Do, do this now or you're going to miss out. That's fear-based marketing. Mm -hmm. So where are we left after that? What do we do about it? And that's where we have to get grounded in reality and then start to consciously choose yeah. differently. Well, look at what Oprah did. I mean, uh, many people talk about why did Oprah leave the networks and why did she do this and why did she do that? Because I haven't talked to Oprah, but I would imagine that she's, she went through what we've been going through. 
that's made us move in a direction to become totally independent. And that's what she did. Um, and that came from her heart. Uh, there are other people that decided to leave a career. Ellen is one of them. Um, but the point that you bring up has that the, the box has gotten even narrow, more narrow. And let's just talk about how you feel enclosed in the illusion of choice for a minute. I know I've talked about this before, but I got to point to two women right now. They handled the situation differently. Um, I think it's Emma Stone. Um, probably don't get, have that right. Um, but yeah, Cruella. Yeah, yep. Starred in Cruella. And Scarlett Johansson, Black Widow. Now, both of them had different roles in those movies, but they both had a clause in their agreement. And the clause was, if you're, if you're Scarlett Johansson, you signed an agreement and you produced an executive produced Black Widow. And we watched a mega company, one that you say the word, people would be like, no, Disney wouldn't do that. Oh, yes. And we watched them completely violate the contract that they agreed to by not releasing Black Widow in the movies at all and live streaming it on a network. And most actors would not question that. They would not challenge that. They wouldn't go against the grain. They wouldn't speak up. But those two did. And Patricia Arquette is another one. But very few people will know what Scarlett Johansson risked to fight something that had to do with principle. And many of you will understand that by her taking that action, even though they did not go to court, the difference between Emma Stone and Scarlett Johansson was Stone settled out of court. Scarlett Johansson was going to go to court. She was going to like go to trial with the Disney. That's a bold move. And we're not talking about it. And when you read about it in the media, they make it like it's all money. But it has to be way more than money to take on a mega company. Aren't we faced with that same challenge ourselves? Aren't we faced with the challenge of speaking up? You know, I, I wonder what happened to these groups that marched out in the streets a year ago. I wonder where they went. I wonder why they went. Because now we're sitting in a place where most women don't know that five months ago, they had the ability to receive equal pay and it was voted down in our government and not a single word was said by anybody really, except me like the broken record. So tell us how you view this illusion of choice and tell us from your perspective where you sit, what you think we can do. First of all, I think that part of that illusion is that we're being fed all the information by just consuming what's been thrown at you on social most people probably consume their media on social media nowadays um but there's so much more information out there and there's so many other sides to the story out there and that's really the whole point of my show is bringing in different perspectives we're really not getting the full story the full picture or the full perspective on anything unless you do a lot of work and a lot of research to find it because you've brought this up a lot how many, and you've brought up, you did a, you know, independent poll of women and how many people even knew. Why didn't they know? Well, because where was it made public to anybody for any, to take any action, right? Without you, you know, you're the type of person that you're keeping your eye on those things. Not everybody has time or wants to dedicate their time. They're choosing differently, right? So I don't actually know what the solution is other than more independent voices and independent networks being able to rise up in a way that provides another, another perspective, more perspectives, diverse perspectives, contradicting perspectives, because that's when we then get to make actual choices about mm -hmm. who we want to be, what we want to consume, and whether we want to engage in it, take action in it, or not. And we're free to choose. 
But without all the information, we're not free to choose because we're not given all the information. I agree with you. Um, I was talking to a couple of our hosts over the past couple of weeks. And one of the things I said to them, look, is we have to be a network where it's safe to be vulnerable. And I was talking to uh, uh, two of them on two different issues. And I said, I have to feel like it's safe to talk about things that are really important and not worry if I'm being politically correct. Like maybe I don't say black and brown correctly, or maybe I leave LGBT and I leave the Q out. I mean, I have to be able to have a conversation and we have to not get caught up on are we being politically correct? Because we have gone so far in the realm of political and social media correctness that we're self-monitoring so much that we don't even have coherent sentences coming out anymore. And nobody really understands what we're saying. And those are the bones that allowed us to make change. You see, we didn't stop and think, okay, am I saying this right when I'm protesting? Does my sign say the right thing? Do, 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 when I'm fighting for rights, am I being politically correct? The most politically incorrect statement, perhaps that was ever made by a woman for women's rights was Gloria Steinem. When she got so tired of now, the now organization, not including lesbians, that she said, we're all lesbians. That at the time was one of the most politically incorrect <laughs> statements. Now, everybody wants to be lesbians. Well, I don't know about everybody, but anyway, it's viewed differently. But that statement at that time was so politically energizing and took so much backlash. One of the most incredible books never read by the generations of now is a book called Backlash. It was such a controversial book. I think the author maybe wrote one book, this book. But it was so powerful for that time. I want to ask you, what is going to help people step forward and be who they are? and run the risk of maybe not being politically correct, but being able to be on a show and say the word ivermectin, which by the way, Facebook and YouTube, ivermectin is used to treat disease in dogs. So it's a real thing. But what's gonna allow us to have a conversation because if we don't have a conversation, we will never get to what Stephen Covey said in the seven habits of highly effective people. And that is we have to listen to understand. We will never get there. Exactly. That's it. It takes two, it takes two parties. It takes one, having the courage to show up and not be afraid to say the wrong thing or ask the wrong thing. If it's coming from a place of heart and wanting to be better. Because this, you know, that goes into the cancel culture of things. We, we have now been made so afraid to approach or ask to be better because there isn't a safe space to do so. So it takes the courage to get past all of that, to do that. And the other side, it takes grace. It takes understanding. Because if I ask a question that's offensive to somebody, it's because I'm trying to understand so I can be better. So on your end, you have to have some grace and understanding that I'm not coming at you trying to be offensive. I'm coming at you trying to understand and have compassion and be better and do better. And if I'm shamed for that, I'm not going to ask again then. Yeah. Right. We zip our lips, we zip yeah. our lips and we pretend like some of this stuff doesn't exist. Yeah. And then we don't have conversations about it. And then we end up in circles like we have been for generations and generations. Well, you know, can I bring up a controversial point for you? Because sure. I think I need help with this. I brought it up with Megan, who's on next. I don't know if I'll go there on the show with her. But I said, you got to help me understand something. I really want to understand. There might be there might be a group of people over here 
that believes you are impinging upon my freedom by making me wear a mask, by making me get a vaccine. It is my body. And you have that same group over here that says, no women, you cannot have control of your body. You cannot get an abortion. Now, I'm not saying it's everybody, but I'm saying there's a crossover. I need to understand that. I need to understand. See, I believe in a certain thing, but I want it to be across the board. I either have control of my body or I don't. I can't have control of my body over here with, with the mask thing and then not have control of it over here. Do you understand the dilemma of why we can't come together on that? I do. And there's a key difference because, and now there's going to be people that'll argue this till they're blue in the face too. But, but the standing argument is please email Jessica. (laughs) The standing (laughs) argument on those two things for me is I'm infringing on your right to walk around and be healthy if I'm not wearing a mask, right? Because I could be infecting you with something, Mm -hmm. but well, then isn't that kind of the same? I used to scream scream in my car with my windows rolled up, but I used to scream at people who were smoking with their windows down because I'm like, you're infringing on my right to breathe free air by smoking your cigarette right now. They were infringing. Can I control those people though? Absolutely not. Can I control what they choose to do? Absolutely not. And that's where we end up into like a little gray area here because we can't control other people. We absolutely cannot control other people. And we're going to have to let go of that at some point because all of that's just based in fear. Yeah. You know, isn't it true that the only thing we can control is our freedom to choose? Mm -hmm. Isn't that really, isn't that really the freedom really when you think about it across the board, you know, you don't know what the world's going to be like 20 years from now, but don't we really have that one freedom, that freedom to choose, to choose how we show up in the world, to choose the action we take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Greta, been following Greta since like she started to speak. I thought Greta Thunberg was just going to bail about a year ago when her family was, their lives were threatened. How, why would you threaten the life of a teenager for speaking out? But she didn't go away, did she? And her family is still getting threatened. And she talked about that. See, that's fear showing up to silence us, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I was talking with one of my co-hosts from Lime Talk Radio, and we were talking about whether or not we'd actually even be able to do that show today. Certainly not in the way we did it. Certainly not talking about alternative and natural medicine the way we did. Mm -hmm. And the very fact that we hesitate to do a show on one of the largest and fastest growing epidemics we have, chronic Lyme disease. And the fact that we are not considering it because we probably won't get it aired is really shocking. But isn't that what you're talking about what you're talking about today? It absolutely is. We've got to get rid of the fear because that's what's driving all this issue. If we can figure out how to get rid of the fear and understand why we're afraid of what somebody's going to say or who's going to believe them or whether it's true or whether it's not true or whether you doing this over here is impacting me. You know what I mean? We got to get, we're looking for a type of control we are never going to have. So if we can get underneath that, go inward, and figure out what we do have control over. We can choose who we want to be. We can choose how we want to show up. We can choose to do better. We can choose to be better. Then everything shifts. And in order to do that, we have to have the information. We have to have alternative solutions. We have to have multiple perspectives. We have to have both sides of the argument so we can make a choice for ourselves and get rid of this right or wrong. Because mm-hmm. we did a show on, we talked about the gray area. It, yeah. 
there's so much gray area in life. We're going to have to just live in that reality for a minute. Yeah. Um, take a look out in the future for yourself. Um, you are on the edge of so many things. You're aware of so many things in media now today. Things that you and I sitting in the back of my apartment in a little room probably never thought we'd be talking about today. But give us your Jessica Henderson vision. Give us, give us a projection of where you would like to go personally, but where you'd like the Transformation Network to go. And thank you for joining me here today. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start with, because I think right now where I am in my life, my personal vision and where I envision the network are so intertwined. <laughs> that they aren't really <laughs> two separate things. I know, me uh, too. Me too. Uh, I just live and breathe it. And I see a world where we have a safe space to go, to have these conversations, for people to engage, to create community. Uh, the people that want to take action and create more change in their lives and the lives of others are equipped to do so. And this isn't an overnight solution. And it starts with pausing and really looking at the reality we're in and what can we choose within that reality. And for me, that's where we have a space to go like a network with different people, different perspectives, different opinions, and places to learn and grow and thrive and pay it forward. And then the world shifts. Little by little, the world shifts. And we've seen it. We get we get, already get people commenting on our YouTube videos or our Facebook or emailing us. I can't tell you how many emails I get because I manage like all the emails that come in through our website. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people reach out to us and say, I can't believe I found this content. Um, I want to contribute. How can I can contribute to this? Can I write an article? Can yeah. I be a guest? Can I be a part of this network in some way? Because what you're doing is powerful and unique and I've never found anything like it. And so we already know we're reaching people in that way and making an impact. And so my vision for that is to be able to do it in a way that we're not flying under the radar anymore. Yeah. And, you know, I love that we team up with KKNW. I had a chance to chat with Eric Crema not too long ago. You know, when KKNW came out over 20 years ago and called themselves Alternative Talk, that was a bold move. And they run the risk just like we do. Every show, they have people just like we do. And they run the risk. And I have not received a single warning from that network about the fact that I should be censoring myself. You see, one ripple effect can create another. And I think that's what you're talking about, the excitement to create places and spaces where people can come and listen and where people can come and share their voice. So what do you do in your next radio show? What do you do in the next podcast? To be determined. I got to find a guest first. I just released two. I did a mini series on microdosing spirituality because <laughs> I realized that my own personal transformation has come in micro doses from consuming shows like this, shows that are on KKNW, shows that are on the Transformation Network, and having these mini aha moments along the way. And so I just released three part mini series on some of the core things that created those micro doses in my own personal mm. transformation. So now I'm going to get back to interviewing people and bringing on other perspectives. And you know, I love the evolution of our host, and you're one of those people. Jessica, thank you so much. We got 60 seconds, maybe less. Tell us what you want to leave us with. We can choose. We can choose who we want to be, and we can choose to show up better than we did the next day, and we can choose to forgive ourselves when we don't quite reach the mark that we were shooting for. Yeah, boy, I'm doing a lot of that these days. Jessica Henderson, I'm Dr. Pat. Oh, we are going to continue this conversation with Megan Edge. And that episode is quite interesting coming up right now for all you people. This is going to be a good one. It's playing on the Edge Radio coming up right now. And uh, on the Edge of Mask 
hypnosis. We'll be right back. Thank you.